how's it going? I'm Jim Root and uh, I'm going to talk to you right now about how I caught uh, 200 largemouth in two days at Lake Oneida. You know, right now everybody's talking about it. Everybody wants to know how did I do that? Because while anybody can go to Oneida and, Kate and catch like two pound smallmouth, those cookie cutter smallmouth that everybody loves to catch in New York because they fight so hard, not many people really know or you know, we'll talk about how to catch largemouth at Oneida Lake. So I'm going to give you some uh, tips that will not only help you at Oneida, but will help you at a lot of other lakes around the country too. So here's the deal. Uh, because I wasn't bed fishing, all right? Everybody thought, oh, well, he was catching them on beds. It's easy when they're on beds. I wasn't bed fishing. Those fish were all pre-spawn. You know, anyone who's seen the pictures, you know, none of the tails were bloody. Those fish were fat you know, and they were gorging. But there were certain things that they wanted. So what I'm gonna cover right now is where I was, what time of day, weather conditions that were crucial, and last I'm gonna tell you what it was I was using and why that bait, that particular bait, was so effective. So first, weather, okay? So we're talking pre-spawn, all right? We're talking fish that are, you know, the, the main lake is anywhere between 52 degrees and 58 degrees, depending on, you know, some different things like what is the uh, rain or, you know, how soon the ice came off, things like that. So, water temp main lake, we'll say 55 degrees, okay? And then, what you want to look for is, when you're at Oneida, it's called Big Bay Creek. Now, the reason why this creek was so key and so instrumental is because the further up that creek you go, it gets real, real skinny, all right? And when, it, and when I say skinny, I mean, if you've got a 20-foot boat, you're not gonna be able to turn it around. And in fact, there's some laydowns that you're not gonna be able to get the boat over. So if you can downsize and use a smaller boat, you'll catch more fish and you'll have more fun. You'll have an easier time turning that boat around and coming back down and making multiple runs. So when you get up in that creek and you come out of the trees, you're gonna come to a big opening, all right? And it's surrounded by trees and it's all swamp. You gotta be on the lookout for snakes because they're real aggressive and they'll try to get in your boat. You're gonna be shooing them away pretty much nonstop. All right, so what do we got? We got a deep lake with smallmouth and largemouth. We got a creek that's flowing into the lake, all right? Not out, it's flowing into the lake. And it's being fed by a swamp that, the best I can tell, is like 2,000 acres, okay? It's a big swamp. So when you get way up there, okay, the stream just disappears. Now, if you look at Google Earth, that stream actually restarts much further up, but it's a long ways up, okay? So, for all intents and purposes, it disappears. It gets so skinny that you can't navigate it, not even with a canoe. So here's what's crucial to that, all right? Because on day one, when I went in that creek, it was about four o'clock, all right? And the fish were stacked up in there. At the, and the further up, when I got into the mouth, the mouth was like 58 degrees, 60 degrees. The further upstream I went, the warmer the water got. Some places further up, that water was 72 degrees. Now, that had me dumbfounded completely. It didn't make any sense in the world. I was like, how can that be? How can that water be 72 degrees when the air temp in New York State at that time had maybe only broken 70 twice? Otherwise, it was cold. I mean, our warm days, that day in particular, when that water was 72, the air temp was 67, partly sunny. So, immediately I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. I went home, I did research, there was no warm water, there's no factory anywhere near there that could be possibly discharging water into there. So how could that be? How is it that that water was so warm? And we were crushing them. The fish in there, were so thick in some places you could almost walk across them. That's how many fish were in there. Thousands and thousands. Not just largemouth, smallmouth, catfish, uh, carp, every pickerel, gar, everything. You both in every type of species was in there. Alright? Go further. 
further up, what do we find? You know, more of the same. And then it just dissipates. So, we caught 85 fish that day in three hours. Almost epic. Leave that day, come back next morning, bright and early. First thing in the morning, I'm like, I'm gonna be the first one in there. I don't wanna, I want those fish, you know, before anybody else has a chance to touch them. Get in the mouth, same deal, 58 degrees. Start going up though, and actually the water temp is going down. I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. I don't understand it. How can the water be going down? You know, the water temperature be going down. Go all the way up, and the fish aren't there. Not like they were the day before. I mean, when I say we're struggling, in the first hour and a half, we caught probably 10 fish. Which, by any other day, that's a pretty good day. But after the day that we just had the day before, we were struggling a little bit. So, go back, you know, start the run, make a run all the way up, come back down, start to make another run. By now, it's like 1030. And I noticed the temp has gone up a little bit. Now it's like 60, I think we saw 62 degrees a couple of times. And we're like, hmm, maybe, maybe it's starting to happen. And that's when I start piecing it together. And the best way I can describe it is, when I was young, I had this neighbor, Mrs. Thorne. And Mrs. Thorne, would start sun tanning in like March when it was cold outside. I mean, we could barely wear shorts, but she was on her porch sun tanning. And so she would always have a better tan than anyone else. And what and the way she did that was she would hang towels around the railing. And it was south facing. So basically it would just the heat index from the sun would make the temperature there on her porch like 80, 82 degrees, while every place else it was cold. So what you have in that swamp is, a, is a, an area that is, you know, generating this tremendous amount of heat from the sun. There's trees all around it, so it's being blocked by the wind. And it's cranking the temperature up on that water so that in the afternoon, it is loaded with fish because by four o'clock in the afternoon the water in that upper creek is 70 or 72 degrees and they are just packed in there like no tomorrow so that's why all my buddies who had been there two days before me told me before I came up don't even waste your time because they're not in the creek well they were there first thing in the morning and there were only one or two in there and that's why they didn't catch them and why they left if they had come back in the afternoon they would have seen what we saw when we came back there at two because after i figured that out we left went to the river came back at two o'clock sure enough water 72 degrees again and we are hammering them we caught 125 fish that day so in seven hours we caught 200 and he was 215 fish or something like that in seven hours time which is incredible it's almost every single cast we were catching so that's what you want to do you want to look for places and there are other lakes too that i found very similar geography very similar layout that i know that i know will provide the same kind of fishing for you in that early spring that two weeks before the spawn when the when the crappie and the bluegill and the panfish bite is hot and that's what that place was full of was a bunch of guys that were crappie fishing and pan fishing when that bites on and those guys are in there those fish those bass will be in there too especially on those days when you're going to find that that air temp is in the 60s you know mid to upper 60s even higher if it's 60 degrees and above and sunny that those creeks will, will get warm that bite's going to turn on and in the afternoon you can have some of the best fishing you've ever had in your life now i want to tell you what it was that i caught them on and why it was so key 
So it was definitely not a fast bite. It was not a reaction bite. It was a vertical, it was a flipping bite. And what they wanted, what I was using was a new bait from Slop Frog Baits, from CNC Baits called the Mendota Rig. Okay, and what that is, is it's an inverted weight system where the weight is on the bottom. And what I was able to do with that bait was work it around wood, work it through the grass, slide it in very easy because the weight is on the bottom. So I was leading with the weight every single time. And it wasn't just being able to do that so quietly, which was key because that water where we were fishing is gin clear. There's a lot of current running through there and it's in no way, shape or form muddy. So I was being quiet. I was sliding it in the water like an Olympic diver with almost no noise, and no splash. But it was also the color. And Slop Frog has the color that they wanted at that time. And that's the only piece of information I'm not going to give you is what color it was they wanted. So, but you'll, you'll have to find out for yourself. Now, we had a lot of different samples that day, those two days. And I only had so many of that one color. And the reason why I know that color was so key, why they were keying on that color is because once I ran out of that and I was using the other baits, we still caught them, but that color outfished them 10 to 1. 10 to 1, they ate that color. So, do your research, find out what the color is that they want, and you can have an incredible day of fishing just by paying attention to the weather and knowing what the conditions are. That bite in that area only lasts for that two weeks in the spring. It won't be like that in the fall, and it's definitely not like that in the summer. But in the springtime, when you find areas like that, you can do a serious stroke of business and have a tremendous time catching fish. So, I hope that helps. Follow me uh, on my you know, Facebook page or on Twitter or anything like that. And if you ever have any questions about anything, please don't hesitate to ask.